Good morning, everyone. Once again, we join together at this time for our morning prayer and devotion. I commend you for your faithfulness to this important enterprise called prayer. And uh, today we do have so much to pray about. I want to get right into our prayer request. Uh, we need to be praying for Sister Nan Marlette, um, Missouri District UPCI um, Administrative Assistant. Uh, her and her family need our prayers for peace and comfort due to the death of her father yesterday morning. And we know our God gives peace that passes all understanding. Kristen asked that we pray for her Aunt Rachel and Uncle Robert, that they would find a great senior living apartment to move into in August. Of course, we need to continue to pray for an end to the war in Ukraine and for God's protection for our missionaries in that nation. Uh, when I see the nightly news and the headlines uh, posted throughout the day, uh, I realize how quickly uh, people forget what is going on around them and get bored and tired of, of uh, thinking on it. And such is the case with the war in Ukraine. But I can assure you that God has not forgotten his people and has not forgotten that situation. Let's continue to lift it up to the Lord in prayer today. Our global North American missionaries everywhere need our prayers. And this month we are especially lifting up our church planners in Branson, Kyle and Kennedy Lloyd, a fantastic young couple that I've had the pleasure of meeting over and getting to get acquainted with over the past year. We're believing for a continued revival in that city. In our unspoken request today, let's pray for the Jones family dealing with the situation right now that's very taxing on them. The Bear Archer family, Carmen String Randy and his wife and young son all remain in need of our prayers today. We're praying for Tracy for continued productivity, uh, for her to be able to catch up all her work after having been out for several days due to COVID. And we do have many uh, or some who are still battling COVID. Uh, Ron Asher, Judy Williams' mom, brother and sister Purser, and uh, several at the Mingo RCF, which prevents us from having on-site Bible study or picking them up for church until that facility is cleared of COVID. So let's continue to pray that it would uh, swiftly move through the rest of what it's going to do there and uh, that that facility would be uh, clear of the virus. We're praying today for uh, those with heart issues, Joyce Fisk with a recent heart attack, Cheryl Chance, Jimmy Warren who needs heart valve replacement, Sister Patty Arnold, Mike Sappington whose heart has only been working at 15% capacity, Michelle Strain's mother, who recently had an irregularity found on a heart monitor. Janie Parrott's nephew, Blaine, who had uh, uh, heart problems discovered on an EKG he was having for a football physical. I think he's just 13 years old and the bottom half of his heart is not working properly. We also need to pray for Kenny Prenzel and for Brantley and Elsie, uh, these two children dealing with heart issues. Uh, we're praying for those who have chronic lung conditions, LaVon, Michael and Grover, Kendra, and Robbie. Uh, Cheryl and Chance's family member and Sue Helton Morse's brother have uh, chronic problems due to head injuries. Let's continue to believe for their healing today. Other children who need our prayers include Myra, Lorelei, Jenna, and Tucker who are battling childhood cancer. Um, Abel Ray with PKU syndrome. Abram, Abram Page with GNA01 disorder. Tano Lopez with spina bifida, and Arlo, uh, who continues his uh, long recovery after this um, situation where he was run over by a truck accidentally. Arlo's grandfather, at last report, was very close to death, and the family was just praying for a peaceful passing for him as he has been suffering for quite some time and is ready to be with the Lord. We're also praying for Chuck Laurie, who's been on hospice care. Uh, those who have back pain need our continued prayers. Uh, Sister Melana Cummins hurt her back again at work yesterday and has been in a lot of pain. We're also praying for Tammy Lawson, Carolyn Rogers, Becky Wilson, Bob O, Terry Nelson, Brent Moore, Cindy Page, Charles Davis, Brianna Williams, Michael Parrott, Lori Gravel, and Pam's daughter Jenny, who has osteoporosis of the spine and hips. Those with diabetes who need our prayers, 
Christian Carr and Titus Dornbach with juvenile diabetes and several adults. The committee our continued prayers, Cindy and Lloyd Page, Tim Workman, myself, Emily Stanley, Becca and her mother, Christina, J.R. Johnson, Kristen's neighbor, Natalie, Jimmy Warren, Cheryl Chance, Brother Pulliam, Charlie Davis, Evie, and Rose Brown. Rose Brown is also needing healing of arthritis. June Coffer is suffering with arthritic pain. Tasha Ray dealing with a knee injury. Renee has mobility issues caused by problems with her hips and knees. Chris Ramey needs healing of her knees so that she can walk again. Both Chris and Renee have been dealing with these issues for quite some time. Olivia, Kristen's neighbor Natalie, Regina Marlin's granddaughter Aubrey, Heather Spence, and Michael Parrott need healing of chronic stomach problems. We're praying for Sarah Stroop, Marty DeLock, Riley Marsh, and Carmen's sister Tracy, who all battle with multiple sclerosis. Um, my father and my mother-in-law both need healing of Parkinson's disease. Marsh's mother-in-law Vivian, Tim Workman, and Russ also needing healing of Parkinson's. We're praying for those who are battling cancer. These include Kathy Williamson, Hugh's wife, Linda Fox, Dell Bishop, Marsha's co-worker, uh, co-worker's brother actually has cancer, Christy Smith, a lady here in Puxico with stage four breast cancer, Scott Lucia, Belinda Bauer, Tony Nelson, Joy Burke, Alicia Piero, Dwayne Lewis, Carmen's neighbor Eddie, and Joey Etheridge, both diagnosed recently, Alice Elizabeth, Philip Randall, Monica Harmon, Kathy Burks, Edie Percival, Stephanie Thompson, Michelle Strain, Sister Cindy, Kathy Benson, Michael Boland, Sylvia Larimore, Dennis Phelps, Claire Kay, Sherry, who has a lupus and a recent cancer diagnosis, Marcia's friend's grandparents, Diane Escher, and Ari Bowers. We're believing for continued recovery for several people, Wally Nyland, Recovering from recent surgery, Pastor Mickey Lewis and Kathy Crow, recovering from open heart surgery, Donna Robinson, uh, who had a recent surgery, Jody Smith's mother, recovering from several serious injuries sustained in a car accident, uh, Steve Wilkerson is recovering from cancer surgery, Scott Smith recovering from emergency surgery uh, to remove an intestinal blockage, uh, Tina's mother, Sheila Sappington, uh, Kelly and Shannon, and Evangelist Billy Huey, all recovering from stroke. Let's continue to pray for Eric Williams and Leslie Sutton, who have had recent surgeries and have been going through rehab to gain strength and function uh, to walk properly again. Ashley Johnson, a gunshot victim uh, on a long road of recovery. Jim Connor, uh, recovering from kidney transplant surgery. And Nathan Van Ingen, recovering from cancer surgery. In our other health needs today, uh, my mother, Ada Bryant, needs uh, healing. She had to miss midweek church service last night due to a headache with blurred vision to the point that she did not feel safe to drive. Sister Pam Pulliam was not feeling well again last night after having just recovered from a battle with sinusitis the day before. So let's continue praying for Sister Pam. Also, AJ's daughter with spinal fluid leaking into her brain. Mara Sullivan with lupus and autoimmune cerebritis and several other health needs for Chloe, Tom Shannon, Shirley Garner, Wilda Morrison, J.R. Johnson, who now has a sore on his toe with difficulty healing due to diabetes, Phyllis Robinette, Judy Williams' brother, Regina Bishop, Nicole, Jimmy Holden, Jim Johnson, John Belter, Meredith, Les and Pat Wells, Gary Nelson, Devin Huff, and Mike and Tony Hodge. We're praying for Kristen's Uncle Monty, who needs uh, prayer for both physical and spiritual matters, and many other spiritual and family needs we're praying about today, including uh, Pam Davies, who needs strength to take care of her husband. Uh, her husband, William, suffers with alcohol addiction and related health issues. We're praying for Dawson for uh, relief and uh, from drug addiction and mental issues. Uh, all those who need deliverance from addictions need our prayers today, and I'm sure many people come to your mind today as well as I've mentioned these others. The Rush family has an unspoken need. Art Chandler, uh, Jenny Perkins' sister Lisa needs mental, emotional, and spiritual healing. We're praying for Grace's circle of friends, especially her best friend and her best friend's family, needing God to continue to work, uh, that they would have wholeness and peace in their relationships. 
uh, Brother Mark Perkins. Children need our continued prayers. Mark and Caitlin and Matt and Michaela are praying for Dee Dee's biological father and his family. Connie Graham has a financial need. Marcia and Britt need continued prayers for their family. We're praying for baby G's adoption process with the next court date coming up um, toward the end of August. I'd also ask you to pray for uh, my brother-in-law, uh, Frank, uh, who has a situation that he has to deal with um, coming up here in the next few days as well. Annette and Dave need to continue healing in their marriage. Pam Pulliam's family, Johnny Nelson's family, uh, Carrie Jones and her family, Carrie Sampson and family, Maury needing prayer for his finances and for his children. Rose Brown's granddaughter and her husband and kids need a miracle in their life. Debbie Biddick's daughters and their families. Uh, Beulah's family. Uh, J.R. Johnson and Regina Marlin's family needing salvation. Alan, Alicia, Cheryl's family member. Charles Gossett going through a life change. The Sappington family, Judy and Mike's family, Jennifer and Brenda's family, our Mingo Job Corps students, and of course our Mingo Residential Care residents, all of these in much need of our prayers uh, this morning. And we're believing that God is going to meet and is going to supply every need according to his riches and glory. Aren't you glad that God does not have limitations as we do, but he is able to do absolutely anything. I welcome you this morning, Judy and Kristen, uh, Pam and Sherman, uh, Johnny, good to see you this morning. Carmen, good morning to you. Uh, Marcia and um, any others who are signing on here, we welcome you to this morning. I know that every morning by the time we get to the end, I see there are others who have joined us, and I encourage you to go back and watch the first part if you happen to miss it, and you will be blessed as we believe together um, for the results that uh, are needed for each of these situations. We've been talking about uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, and really honing in, especially on the message of humility that's contained in that scripture. Although we're focusing on different aspects of that message uh, each day. I'll read the scripture to you one more time. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people which are called by name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I have pointed out to you over these past several days um, that humbling ourselves is the first step of four steps in achieving uh, revival, spiritual renewal, healing for our land, uh, these are not all part and parcel of the same command, but they're actually four separate commands. Humble ourselves, pray, seek the face of God, and turn from our wicked ways. We do not do the last three things on the list until we're willing to do the first thing. It requires an attitude of humility to achieve change in our own lives. When we're talking about humility, we we'll find other words that are always close by. And we may not like these words, but they have a whole lot to do with being humble. The Apostle Peter admonished us in 1 Peter 5 and 5, ye younger, submit yourselves. That's a word that we don't like. I was uh, talking to a neighboring pastor the night as he was ministering at a pastoral installation service, and his title was just one word, and that word was commitment. And I told him after the service, I need you to come to Puxico sometime and, and just preach on that word, uh, commitment. That is that is considered a dirty word in today's culture. Um, more dirty than any four-letter word you can imagine in people's mind is that word commitment. And this word uh, submission it goes right along with that and is not a popular word whatsoever. But the Bible tells us, ye younger Submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject, we don't like that word, one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. To submit means to yield to governance or authority. To subject means to make yourself amenable to the discipline and control of a superior. Another word we don't like. 
It also means to make yourself accountable, another word that people just aren't very fond of. The scripture does not only say that the younger are to submit unto the elder, but it goes on to say all of you be subject one to another. All of us, not just the youth, are supposed to be accountable one to another and a minimal to discipline. If a parent doesn't see the need of being faithful to the house of God, then there's nothing that a pastor can say or do that will convince their children otherwise. If the parents don't sacrifice, the kids will not sacrifice. You see, we're all accountable to each other. And if we older ones refuse to humble ourselves, then we cannot expect anything different or better from the generation coming along behind us. There's a lot of truth in Proverbs 30, verse 15. It simply says, the horse leech hath two daughters crying, give, give. What does that mean? Well, what it says to me is just that you are inevitably going to reproduce um, in each excessive successive generation uh, there will be more of what you were we are reproducing ourselves and uh, i will admit there are times that my worship is not what it should be because i let things affect me but we need to remind ourselves that uh, when jesus went to calvary he wasn't exactly having a good day was he uh, but i'm glad that um, he didn't uh, quit in the middle of that important project, in the middle of that important, all important sacrifice because he was tired and because they had pulled out his beard and because they beat him and because they put him through all these things. But Philippians 2 and 8 says, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. What would happen if from the eldest all the way to the youngest of us, we would allow ourselves to begin to follow the example in every detail of our Lord and humble ourselves and begin to realize how much we can affect those around us. Second Chronicles, that scripture that we have been reading the past several days, uh, 7 and 14, it tells us that humbling ourselves, that is the beginning of the revival that we all desire. If we will humble ourselves and place the needs of others above our own desires, God will intervene. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. And so today, let's continue to keep that mindset that we're going to put others' needs before our own. We're not going to become haughty or arrogant, but we are going to subject ourselves one to another, be accountable one to another, and most of all, be accountable before God for the important work of prayer and intercession that we are involved in, not only in this time, but just in living out our lives daily. Our lives are to reflect an attitude of worship of the one and only true and wise God. Let's pray to him once again. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. Oh, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to come into your presence again. Lord, I'm a blessed man today just to know you, to know you in the power of your spirit, and Lord, also to know you in the fellowship of your suffering. Every suffering that I've experienced in life, I know has had purpose, and I thank you for it. And I pray for those today who perhaps are suffering right now. I pray, God, that they would realize that as they maintain the spirit of humility, that you are going to exalt them in due time. This is not the end of the story, but you are going to raise them up, and there is joy that's coming in the morning, and we give you praise for it today. Hallelujah. Lord, take our lives today. Make of us what you want us to be. Redirect us, God. Change us, Lord, that you would be glorified in us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, meet the needs of your people. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven today. Lord, grant the petitions of your people today. You see, Lord, the the situations that people find themselves in this morning, needing help and strength and comfort. We pray, God, for Sister Nan Marlette and her family. Comfort their hearts as they deal with and cope with the death of her father after this brief illness. We pray for Kristen's Aunt Rachel and Uncle Robert that they would find a great senior living apartment to move into by this August deadline. We pray for an end to this senseless war in Ukraine. We pray your protection upon our missionaries upon that nation, upon the refugees that have been affected so deeply, those who have lost loved ones 
to this violence. We pray, God, for all of our missionaries globally and right here in North America. We especially lift up Kyle and Kennedy Lloyd and Branson today, believing God for a breakthrough in that ministry. We pray, Lord, for these who have unspoken needs today. You see the Jones family and what they're going through right now. You see Frank and his family. God, we pray, Lord, your help and your strength, uh, Lord, to just rebuke and repel the attack of the enemy today. We pray for Carmen's friend, Randy, and his wife and young son. We lift up the archers today, God. We pray, Lord, for Tracy this morning, that you would just give her strength and uh, uh, for productivity to catch up in her work. Let her mind be sharp. Let her body be strong today to be able to uh, do the work she needs to do and to catch up after battling COVID. We lift up all those who are battling COVID right now. Ron and Judy's mom and our Mingo RCF residents, brother and sister Purser, those with chronic lung conditions, uh, we believe for their healing today. Those with ongoing problems uh, due to head injuries and dealing with headaches today. God, we pray for those with heart issues, uh, that you would reach down and touch them. Those who have just discovered problems and those who have been dealing with it chronically and have gone through surgeries for it. God, we know that you are the healer of every manner of sickness and disease. And it's you that we depend on this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. You're able to heal those hearts uh, physically, spiritually, whatever's needed, God. You are in control today. We pray for Brantley and Elsie with their heart issues and these other children who are in need today. Abram and Abel, Tano and Myra, Lorelei, Jenna and Tucker and Arlo. In Jesus' name, Lord, you said to permit the children to come to you. Take them in your arms today, God, and just give strength to their little bodies of we pray, God, that they would receive the miracles that they desire today. In Jesus' name, we lift up Chuck Laurie and Arlo's grandfather, who have been so close to death for uh, some time now. We pray, God, for an end to their suffering. Lord, that you would reach down right now and minister to the needs of them and their families. We pray, God, for those battling diabetes. Touch Christian and Titus. Touch Cindy and Lloyd Page. Tim Workman and Emily Stanley. Becca and her mother, Christina. Touch J.R. Johnson today. We pray, God, for healing of this wound on his toe. We pray for Kristen's neighbor, Natalie, for Jimmy Warren and Cheryl a chance, for Charlie, for Evie, for Rose, for Brother Pulliam. We pray for Johnny Nelson and Beth and Marcia and Melena needing healing of migraines. Marcia's co-worker's son for healing of migraines today. All those who are suffering with back pain, Lord, like Melena, who just hurt her back again at work yesterday, we pray God, for strength and healing for each of them. We pray for those suffering with arthritis, touch rose in June, those with knee injuries today and knee pain and hip pain. We pray your healing for them, for Tasha and Renee and Chris. Lord, those with Parkinson's disease needing your touch right now. Touch my father and my mother-in-law in Jesus' name. Marcia's mother-in-law, Vivian, needs your healing touch. We pray for Tim and Russ right now. Lord, for those battling MS, uh, Tracy and Marty, Riley and Sarah, you are their healer today. Each one who's battling cancer right now, you are the mighty God. You're greater than any disease process. We curse those cancer cells in your mighty name, Lord Jesus. There is no other name under heaven like your name. Hallelujah. In your name, there is salvation and deliverance. There is hope and healing in your name. And we come in your stead today. We come in your authority, Lord. And we curse these cancers in Jesus' name. We speak healing right now. Hallelujah. We believe for continued recovery today for these who have had recent surgeries. Nathan and Steve uh, uh, Wilkerson. We pray for Donna Robinson and Kathy Crow and Pastor Mickey Lewis and Wally Nyland. Believing for all of them. Scott Smith. All these recovering from surgeries believing for their healing. These uh, who have had injuries to their legs and ankles and have had surgery are now learning to walk properly again. Touch them, Eric and Leslie today. Those who have had stroke, Brother Huey, Carmen's cousins, Kelly and Shannon, Tina's mother, and Sheila Sappington, we believe for their healing and their recovery this morning. We pray for Mara Sullivan for healing of lupus and autoimmune cerebritis, uh, for AJ's daughter needing healing of the spinal fluid leak. Uh, we pray for my mother today, Lord, for her healing in Jesus' name, for Sister Pam to receive a healing touch, 
We pray for these others who have health needs today, Chloe and Tom, Shirley and Wilda, J.R., Phyllis, and for Judy's brother, for Regina Bishop and Nicole, for Jim Johnson and Jimmy Holden. We lift up John Belter and Meredith, Les and Pat, Gary Nelson and Mike and Tony and Devin today. We believe for your healing for them in Jesus' wonderful name. We pray for Kristen's Uncle Monty, Lord. Meet his physical and spiritual needs today. Lord, move in the needs of these uh, who are suffering from addiction. We pray for Dawson and William and others that are suffering with addiction today and the health issues that come along with that. We pray for Pam Davies today, Lord, that you would give her strength, not only physically but spiritually, Lord, to take care of her husband. We pray for the Rush family and for Art Chandler. We lift up Jenny's sister, Lisa, today. We pray for Grace's friends, for Grace's best friend's family, for wholeness and peace in their relationships. We pray for Mark's children today, Matt and Michaela and Mark and Caitlin. We lift up Dee Dee's biological father and his family. We pray for Connie Graham today, Lord, that you would move in her financial situation. We pray for Marcia and Britt's family, for baby G's adoption, for Annette and Dave's marriage, for Pam's family, for Johnny's family. We lift up Carrie Jones and her family. We pray for the Sampsons today. We pray for Maury and his children. Meet their financial need today, God. We pray for Rose Brown's granddaughter and her husband and children. Lord, you're working a miracle for them. We pray for Debbie's daughters and their families today, for Beulah's family, for Regina's family salvation, for Alan, for Alicia, for Cheryl's family member, for Charles Gossett, for the Sappingtons, and for Judy and Mike's family. We lift up Jennifer and Brenda's family today. We pray for our Mingo RCF residents and for our Job Corps students. Lord, we're believing for continued revival in Puxico and in every area, everywhere that our prayer warriors are lifting up your name today and interceding. We believe for breakthroughs today in their local churches, in their communities. Oh, God, let your perfect will be done through us. Help us to keep the right attitude and the right mindset of service to our fellow man. And we give you the praise and glory for what you're doing through this prayer ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you again this morning. We thank you so much for praying with us, for being a vital part of this prayer ministry. And that's exactly what it is, is a ministry. And uh, God is going to continue to use these prayers to affect change in the lives of those that we love and the lives of those that we work with and brush shoulders with every day. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'll see you again tomorrow morning for our last prayer session for this calendar week on Friday morning right here on Facebook Live at 7.30 a.m. I'll see you then.